Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we have another lesson on Mega Goal 6. But before we start it, let's take a quick recap of the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we started with the title of the unit, which is Lost and Found. Usually, each unit we have revolves around the title of this unit or of the unit in general. Okay? So in this unit, Lost and Found, we have many stories about lost things and stories of people who lost things then found them and today we have different stories about finding things. Today we have stories about people who found treasures. Okay, but before we start our lesson today, let's take a quick recap of the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we focused on the seventh part, which is vocabulary building. In the vocabulary building, we had six words that were extracted from the essay that we are going to read today. We read and we've listened to this essay together and you were asked to try to guess the meaning of these eight words, or sorry, uh, of these six words. After that, we explained these words, we talked or we gave some synonyms for each one of them, definitions and also explanations. Then after that, we answered them together. Now let's revise them together. We talked about the first one, accustomed. We said when you do something regularly, that means you are accustomed to it. So it means also uh, used to. Number two, appraiser. If you have something like a golden medal and you want to know the price or how much does it worth, you take it to appraiser. Number three, astronomer is a person who is interested in the outer space. Number four, authentic is something real, something that doesn't have any copies or other versions. Number five, stumble upon means Finding something by accident and the last word wedged means something that is uh, stuck between two things. And the answers for each one of them is as shown here on this slide. Number one, accustomed is D, used to. Number two, appraiser is A, someone who determines the value of something. Number three, astronomer is F, which is scientist who studies outer space. Number four, authentic is B, real. Number five, stumble upon is E, find something by chance. And the last one, which is C, stuck between two things. Today we have a reading lesson. In this reading lesson, we are going to listen to some interesting stories about people who were lucky enough to find treasures in unexpectable or unexpected places. But before we start reading uh, this essay together, I want you to take some time to think about anything that you have found in your life and that thing is valuable. Have you ever found anything valuable and or anything that uh, you find it by by chance and it's worth a lot. Also, we have here the before reading question, which says, where are some places that people might find valuable items? Do you know any, do you know any places that uh, most likely uh, people will find valuable items in? And also, have you ever looked for treasures in these places? Have you tried to go there by your own to, to try to find these treasures? If so, what have you found? Take some time to think about these questions. Try to answer them. If you have a colleague or someone who is interested in these things, you can discuss these questions with them. Usually, we use the before reading questions just to Refresh your mind to activate your prior knowledge so you can think and reflect on what you are going to read and that 
give you the chance to understand it in a better way. The title today is, Look What I Found. Okay, we have here an essay about some stories that we are going to read together. I want you now to pick up your pen, listen carefully, underline the new words. So after that, we explain the new words, we explain some of the expressions or phrases that might be uh, difficult for you or some, some of the phrases that you might run into for the first time. Now let's go ahead and listen to the first part of this paragraph or this essay. Pages 88 and 89. 8. Reading. Look what I found. We are accustomed to hearing announcements of important discoveries made by experts. For example, no one was surprised that it was an archaeologist who discovered Tutankhamun's tomb or an astronomer who spotted Neptune. But every once in a while, the most astonishing discoveries are made by ordinary people. Take, for example, the story of the Philadelphia man who, in 1989, made a historic discovery in a flea market. The man, whose identity was never made known, bought an old painting at the flea market for $4. He did not like the painting, but bought it because he liked the frame. When he got the painting home and took it out of the frame, he was surprised to discover a folded-up document wedged between the painting and the backing of the frame. The document appeared to be an old copy of the American Declaration of Independence. Taking a friend's advice, the man took the document to a professional appraiser where he received incredible news. The document was one of the original copies from the first printing of the Declaration of Independence in 1776. There were only 24 other such copies known to be in existence. The man put this incredibly rare document up for sale and found a buyer for $2.42 million. Okay, now after we have listened to the first and second paragraphs, we have some words that maybe need some explanations. In the first line, we have the word experts. When we say about someone that he is an expert, that means he is professional. He is a specialist in that field or in that area. Another word is announcement. The word announcement when we say there is an announcement today at 12 o'clock, that means we have something important for you. So maybe you need to listen. This is called an announcement. We are going to release a news or we are going to tell you something. After that, we have the word archaeologist. An archaeologist is a person who is interested in finding things uh, in the fields, who works on fields. For example, they dig, they try, they dig in the, I mean, in the, uh, in any field, they try to find things. For example, some people or some archaeologists uh, look for uh, old tombs. Others look for, like, uh, maybe bones of animals and, or anything. So the archaeologist is someone who look um, under beneath the grounds. So we have in the first paragraphs, the first paragraph, three words, announcement, expert, and archaeologist. After that, we have here the word appraiser. We've talked about it and we said uh, that appraiser is a person who value things or who determines the value of something. We have here also another word, which is independence. The document appeared to be an old copy of the American Declaration of Independence. The word independence, or we can say in a person, this person is independent. What is the meaning of independent? It means that you are no longer depending on anyone. It also means that no one is responsible uh, on you. So you, ha you can decide 
whatever you want you can do everything by your own uh, you are not under the guardian of someone you are an independent person or this is an independent country so this document appeared to be an old copy of the American Declaration of Independence so what does that mean that means the American people declared their independence okay they are not depending on any other country taking a friend's advice the man took the document to a professional appraiser where he received incredible news incredible means great and stunning and so on now let's go to the third paragraph terry horton had a similar experience in 1987 Horton was looking through a thrift shop one day when she came across a painting that she thought was one of the ugliest things she had ever seen. She decided to buy it for a friend as a joke gift. She bargained the $8 price of the painting down to $5 and dragged the huge painting to her friend's home. However, the friend refused to take the painting because she thought it was too big and ugly. Horton took the painting home and organized a garage sale where she hoped to get rid of it. Okay, we have some words here. We, will, we are going to start with the first one. Horton was looking through a thrift shop one day when she came across a painting that she thought was one of the ugliest things she had ever seen. Ugliest means, or the word ugly is the opposite of beautiful. And at the end of this word, we have EST. This is a superlative adjective. If we want to compare one thing with many other things, uh, either to make it better or worse, we use the superlative adjective. We add EST at the end of the word. So if we have uh, an easy exam, for example, you can say this is the easiest exam. And here she thought that this is one of the ugliest things that she, is, she had ever seen. Now let's go to the next paragraph. A local art teacher happened to be passing by and saw the painting. She told Horton that the painting looked like it had been painted by Jackson Pollock, a famous 20th century painter whose paintings sell for millions of dollars. Horton had the painting evaluated by experts, many of whom agreed with the art teacher. Since then, Horton has devoted herself to proving that her painting is authentic. She has gained many supporters along the way, including a powerful art dealer. She has had numerous offers to buy the painting, including one for $9 million, but has refused each one. Horton is confident that eventually the art world will accept the painting as an authentic Pollock. If and when this happens, the painting could be worth over $50 million. Okay. Okay, some of the words here, or one of the words that might need some explanation is devoted. Since then, Orton dev has devoted herself to proving that her painting is authentic. Devo devoted means that you dedicate yourself. You put, or uh, let's say that you make some time a good portion of time to do something. Okay, you specify a good portion of time to do something. That means you dedicate yourself to that thing or you devote yourself for that thing. What did Horton devoted herself to? She has devoted herself to proving that her painting is authentic. Now let's go to the next story. Perhaps the single most historic discovery made by a non-expert in recent years was made by an unemployed British man named Terry Herbert. Herbert is an amateur treasure hunter who searched fields and back lots with his metal detector for over 18 years. In all those years, Herbert had never found anything of significant value. But it is a good thing he was so persistent. 
In September of 2009, while using his metal detector on the land of a friend's farm, the detector started beeping wildly. Herbert started digging and soon discovered that he had struck gold, literally. He had stumbled upon the largest Anglo-Saxon treasure ever found. The treasure consisted of 11 pounds of gold and 5 pounds of silver in the form of over 1,500 ornaments, swords, and other weapons. Experts believe this find will give us a much greater understanding of the Anglo-Saxons, the rulers of England from the 5th century until 1106. They also believe that this discovery will be considered one of the most important discoveries in British archaeological history. Okay, in the second line, we will start with the first word, which is unemployed. The word unemployed refers to a person who doesn't have a job. A person without a job is called unemployed. So we have here unemployed British man named Terry Herbert. He is also an amateur treasure hunter. What is the meaning of amateur? Amateur means that this person is not professional. Professional, he means an expert who knows a lot of things in this field. Amateur is the opposite. Someone who doesn't have that or much knowledge in that field. We have here also the word metal detector. Metal detector is a machine that helps people to find uh, th metal things like gold, silver, and so on. In the next line, we have the word persistent. What is the meaning of persistent? That means he is a person who doesn't give up easily. He doesn't give up easily. So he dedicated much of his time to try to look for gold, silver, and whatever there is under the ground that is valuable. And as you can see in the rest of the story, he had found one of the greatest treasures ever. Now we have, or now we will go to the last part of the essay. History. The treasure the value of which will be determined by a committee of experts, will be sold to a museum. The money from this sale will be split evenly between Herbert and the friend who owns the field where Herbert made the discovery. Herbert says that this experience has been more fun than winning a prize. So the next time you pass a garage sale or thrift store or are clearing out junk from your attic, take a careful look. Who knows what unimagined treasures you may discover. Okay, now here, in the last paragraph, we have some of the words. For example, we have here the word evenly. The word evenly. The money from this sale will be split evenly between Herbert and the, t the friend who owns the field where Herbert made the discovery. Evenly means it will be split equally. They will have the same amount of money. For example, if they will be given one million pound, each one of them will take 500,000. That means this amount of money will be split evenly. Okay. Now let's go to the after reading part. We have some true and false statements. We have six statements and we've talked before about the best way to find the correct answer. Firstly, you have to know what should you do? What is the task? The task is to determine that the state if, uh, is the statement true or false. Okay. After that, you go to the statement, you read it, you try to find and underline the keywords. For example, in number one, we have original copy and we have also American Declaration of Independence and then bought for four dollars. All these, or we can just omit American Declaration and we have original copy and bought for four dollars. 
These are the keywords. What is the meaning of keywords? Words that can help you find the answer. After you finish underlining the keywords, go back to the essay and start scanning. Scanning is you scroll your eyes through uh, throughout the, the essay trying to find this piece of information. Once you find it, you stop there, you read the sentence and decide whether it's true or false. And the answer for this one is true. Number two, Jackson Pollock was a famous 19th century painter. So we have here Jackson Pollock and 19th century. The answer for this one is false. Number three, Terry Arton owns a painting that may be an original Jackson Pollock. The answer is true. Number four, the Anglo-Saxon ruled England in the 1600s. The answer is false. Number five, the largest Anglo-Saxon treasure ever found was found with an ordinary metal detector. And this is true. The last one and the last part of our lesson today is number six. The Anglo-Saxon treasure found by Herbert consisted entirely of jewels. Is that true or not? It's absolutely false. That's the last part of our lesson today. Thank you all for attending and I wish you enjoy the rest of the day. Salaam alaikum.